fascinating facts about the yellow jacket wasp and why they're so darn angry in the fall. Meet Karen. Karen is currently experiencing a level of existential rage usually reserved for people who've just discovered their Wi-Fi is out. Wait, what? Are, are we on? Okay, I'm back. She has the patience of a lit firecracker and the social grace of a thrown brick. Why? Because you exist near her and you are between Karen and her sugar and you're likely hogging it all. You might think she's a bee, but no. Calling Karen a bee is like calling a shark a guppy. A bee is a cute, fuzzy, flying vegan that will die for the privilege of stabbing you once. Karen here is a sleek, carnivorous, murder hornet in training who carries a reusable hypodermic needle filled with pure, unadulterated spite. She's not fuzzy, literally or figuratively. Give her a hug, you'll see. She's built to terrorize you and to stabby stab stab you. Oh yeah, and to ruin your picnic. Now, Karen here acts like your picnic is a personal insult to her entire ancestry, but it wasn't always this way. For most of the summer, the yellow jacket, a member of the genus Vespula, no, not the cute Italian scooter, is a respectable contributing member of society. But come fall, that little bugger gets ornery and goes looking for trouble. And then she sees you. This is where you run. The story of our Karen begins in spring as a single lonely queen. Karen survived the winter by herself probably by hibernating in your attic and judging your life choices and has an over-under going about when you get back on that exercise bike. She's locked up the never slot, by the way. When she wakes up, she's a single mom with a mission. Build a kingdom, or a queendom. Oh, let's just go with empire. She finds a nice spot, an abandoned rodent burrow, a hollow wall, that one spot in your lawn you always trip over, or usually right outside your front door for maximum terror effect. And our Karen gets to work. She scrapes up wood fiber, chews it into a pulp, and spits it out to create this artisanal gray paper mache. And I think she's really trying to send a message with this design. Stay away or you will be the one screaming. It's basically a goth pinata. Inside, she lays her first batch of eggs after having gotten busy with Bill, or Lucky Bill as some know him, the previous fall during a romantic nuptial flight. You know, like the Mile High Club, but for wasps. And these all hatch into sterile female workers. Their job? To do everything. You know, just like humans, where the woman does everything including foraging for food, expanding the nest, defending the colony, and raising the younger sisters. All while Karen lays back and becomes a full-time egg-laying machine. And then join bonbons. And for a while, it's a beautiful functioning matriarchy. Oh wait, <laughs> there's our lucky bill. Anyway, the beautiful nest is built on chewed wood and the sisterhood, but without the traveling pants. Now, think of the Yellow Jacket colony in the summer as a company with a very specific mission. The workers have one job, hunt for protein. Caterpillars, flies, other insects, they don't eat this protein themselves. Instead, they fly it back to the nest and feed it to the baby wasp larvae. In return, the larvae act like little in-house vending machines full of sugary treats, like Skittles and such. After being fed their protein meal, the larvae secrete a sweet, sugary liquid. This sugary vomit... Ugh, is the primary food source for the adult worker wasps. Is their paycheck. And this system works perfectly all summer long. Workers bring home protein and the babies pay them in sugar. Unlike human babies that repay us in screaming, pooping, and well, yes, barfing, when it's not sugary. But then the fall happens. Not the season, but yes, that too. No, the fall, as in the collapse of civilization. So, the queen lays a final special batch of eggs that will become next year's queens and a few males called drones. The drones have one job. One. And it's quite an ice gig. To mate. And once that job is done, they die. Well, it was an ice gig. After this last batch of eggs, our heroine, Karen, dies. And the colony's social structure dissolves into utter chaos. So, with the queen dead, or close to it, and not laying new eggs, and the existing larvae having grown up, suddenly the vending machines are all empty. No more Skittles. The worker's one and only food source inside the nest is gone. Now, as you expected, we have a legion of sugar-addicted middle-aged wasps who have been kicked out of their home and just realized their 401k is empty. And they are hangry. This is when they develop their passion for your soda, your watermelon, your beer, your belly button where you spilled your beer, slob, and then your relaxing outdoor gathering becomes a living, buzzing backyard barbecue from hell. Now let's talk about that hardware. That thing on her abdomen isn't just for decoration, although it has a certain je ne sais quoi, don't you think? Well, that harpoony looking thing is a stinger, and it has your name on it. 
Unlike the honeybee, whose stinger is a barb-like medieval fishhook and rips out upon use in a final dramatic act of self-sacrifice, the yellow jacket stinger is smooth, a polished dagger honed for repeated stabbiness. This means our Karen and her pals can reuse it over and over and over again. It's less of a sting and more of a frenzied repeated prison block shanking. And just to be extra, she can bite you at the same time. It's the insect equivalent of being punched while being kicked. Sounds a bit kinky, right? Well, no, it isn't, unless you're into that whole pain thing, but I digress. When she stabs you, she injects a delightful chemical cocktail. The venom contains enzymes that break down your cells and a whole bunch of neurotransmitters that are now screaming pain directly into your brain's face. But here's the fun part. The venom also contains an alarm pheromone, properly called N3-methyl... Whatever. It's a chemical signal that basically paints a giant invisible stab here sign on you for all of Karen's homies. So when Karen stings you, she's not just attacking you. She's also inviting all her unemployed, rage-filled sisters and brothers to the party. And they always RSVP yes. Now, let's just take a moment to appreciate that face. It's a face that says, I have seen the end of days and I'm ready for it. They have these huge compound eyes that look like shattered disco balls, giving them a nearly 360 degree view of things to be angry at. And those mandibles, perfect for chewing up wood, dismembering caterpillars, or just gripping your skin for a better stingy stabby leverage so they can go deep. Yeah, real deep and real hurty like. <laughs> they communicate mostly through chemical signals and by bumping into each other, which seems appropriate for an animal that navigates the world with the subtlety of a mosh pit at a New York Dolls concert. Their life cycle is a brutal, short-lived sprint. A worker lives for maybe a few weeks. The colony itself, this bustling metropolis of thousands, lasts only a single season. By the first hard frost, they're all gone. All except for a few newly made queens who will go on to find their own addicts to judge us in and start the whole angry cycle all over again. Yeah, great. So yeah, the yellow jacket, such a jerk. A misunderstood predator for three months and an absolute ass for one month. Our Karen is a living embodiment of a bad day. A tiny flying sports car with a severe case of road rage with a Mad Max-like weapon. She's nature's way of telling you that your picnic is over. Prick. Now I want to hear from you. Go down to the comments and tell me about a time an insect decided to make its problem your problem. I want to hear all your tales of picnic-related warfare. And if you want to keep learning about the bizarre and frequently horrifying creatures we share this planet with, go ahead and poke that subscribe button. It's way less painful than a yellow jacket sting. Well, probably. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.